Norway is a country famous for Vikings, fjords, northern lights, midnight sun, fishing and shipping, and epic roads to name a few. But it's not a country famous for a road going 917. Back in 1970, Porsche took its first overall victory at the 24 Hours of Le Mans in a 917K. Driven by Richard Atwood and Hans Hermann, red and white Salzburg car. This, as you can see, is not that car. So let's meet Knut, the man who built it. So, Knut, 917 Golf livery. Tell me exactly what it is. It looks like a 917. Describe in your words what it is that you built. So what you have in front of you is what I will call a road legal recreation. That means that it looks the part, but there is small changes underneath that we needed to do to get it road legal. So my first question, to make it road legal, you said you had to drop the 12. Yeah. A 12 cylinder car, engine's not legal in Norway? Not in that car with this amount of kilos of the, the, the weight, so okay. it can be too powerful. So that means that uh, then it will be a track car. Got it. What is the power plant that's in this car? So in terms of the engine, that is a 911 SC bottom case okay. uh, with a SC crank. Uh, but everything else is uh, collected from 964, that means cylinders, 993 pistons. If we have parts from the 996 turbo, we have parts from um, the old 930. And everything is put together to make a flat six quite unique power plant which is then mounted to a g50 in the back uh, and a 935 flat fan on top what size exactly is this motor is it a 3.6 a 3a what is it so it's a short stroke 3.6 so it to be precise it's a 3.315 so it's a 3.6 with a short stroke okay short stroke 3.6 how much horsepower conservatively do you think this makes? For road approval, this has a little more than 300 horsepower, yeah. but it has a lot of grunt from the bottom in terms okay. of torque. Um, it's a turbo though, right? It's a turbo. So the turbo kicks in quite early and gives us the same amount of torque that uh, the original cars had, but a little bit down so in the RPM. In Norwegian speak, we were not on the street and this was going to the track. And we're not concerned about being road legal. Give me peak horsepower and torque, please. So if we remove the exhaust, that means the, the muffler is out. So we have a little Got bit it. more flow. So this is running a muffler. This is running a muffler to be a little bit more silent. Okay. But when we uh, then increase the turbo pressure a little bit, we have excess of 400 horsepower and we are talking about nearly 600 Newton meters. Wow. Okay. And what does the car weigh? Thousand kilos. A thousand kilos. It's a little bit more heavy than the original one because we are a little bit heavier on the frame due to safety. And safety first. Safety first. And there is a heater. There is a climber. There is things that the original car never had. So this is. You have a heater in it. I have a heater in it, and I have a cl climber in it. Why build a 917? So the 917, if you could buy one. Yeah. Uh, that will set you back about 25 million or something. That's a lot of money. And it will never ever be road legal. Okay. So this is next best thing. It looks the part and it's, you can take it on the street. Why choose Golf livery? So if you look at the, the 70, uh, the Salzburg car that won Le Mans right. is what you will, that is what everyone talked about. Okay. But if you look through all the other races, the one that won nearly everything was the Golf team with the Golf livery. Now that was the John Wire team, not the actual Porsche factory team, yeah, right? Right. John right. Wire racing out of England. Yeah. So back then, privateers would go to the factory, order a 917, and actually campaign it themselves, right? Yeah. So the golf livery, though, was this made world famous in Steve McQueen's 1971 classic film Le Mans? Yes. Okay. go from nothing to a 917 where are you getting the panels from where are you getting the technical drawings from i'm assuming this is a tube frame yep. where are you getting all those measurements from is porsche helping you with data or yes. what are you doing yes so 
all the blueprints are still available from Porsche. How do you get them from Porsche? I mean, do you, you walk into the dealer in Oslo and say, I want to build a 9 uh, There is a lot of original drawings floating around on the internet. And if you ask Porsche nicely, they will actually help you wow. with some drawings. Okay. Uh, the biggest problem is the body panels because you can't buy them. And of course, the original owners want to keep their car. Correct. Uh, so this, this particular car is built up on molds from three, three different original cars. So you have a Gulf in the back and you have Salzburg in the front and we have a third car for the doors. Okay. But so everything fits together. Talk to me a little bit about how you combined what you were talking about to build your dream car. So the 69 was a long tail. Okay. This is the short tail that okay. came in 70. And then between 70 and 71, Gulf and the other team, Martini and so on, they widened the rear okay. to take not 15 inch, but 17 inch wide tires. Okay. So this is the Gulf back section, but all the teams have different back sections. Yeah. That is the reason why you will not find any 917, which is the same. Um, so they, they have small flavors that is changed from car to car. 272 kilometers northwest of Oslo lies the small historical Norwegian village of Lateral. Set in the picturesque fjord surrounded by tall mountains and lush scenery, the once busy shipping port is now a popular tourist destination with some epic driving roads. It seems pretty cramped in there, like when it's a fighter jet plane. Talk to me about the wide sill that looks about, I don't know, 18 inch at least, maybe 20 inch. So in the original car, this is the place for the fuel. Okay. So it's fuel on each side. Uh, since we are running a flat six and we are concerned about safety, yeah. the fuel tank is hidden. Where is the, the fuel tanks? Right there. Yeah in the front of the engine. Right behind the bulkhead? Yes. So, so is the seating position in the exact same position as the original? Yes. Okay. So steering wheel, seating position, everything is in the exact the same place. Talk to me about the pedal cluster down there. So the pedal cluster is as the original one. That yeah. one's tight and doesn't like shoes very much. Yeah. So uh, big feats like mine and yours is a little bit uh, tough. So I'm in the 917. I'm slapping on my favorite Momo Pro Tipo. I have to say, the thing that surprises me straight away, having driven a lot of Porsches, but never a 917. To me, it seems like I'm laying in bed about to go drive a car. By that, I mean, it's a really laid back position. My legs are straight just to touch the pedal box. I'm so used to the upright 911. This reclined position, is really something I've never experienced before. Is this exactly the rate, the position, the angle that a factory car would yeah. be? Yeah, so the only thing is the pedal box for uh, drivers, which was a little bit shorter than us, is more to you. So but they would have had an adjustable travel pedal box? Yes. Okay. It reminds they, actually, they actually had each uh, their own seat. So they just slammed in the seat and jumped in. And the pedals are slightly off center from the steering wheel. Right? Yep. What is going on with all this stuff? We're trying to put all the switches in the exact correct position. Okay. Uh, they don't do the same thing. Okay. So, of course, there's two fuel pumps in the original. I only have one fuel pump. Okay. And, but it is the same gauges, the same known amount. So, all that has to do with heaters, we have road legal, electrical mirrors and so on. We're moving that away so we don't see it. Okay. Uh, because we don't want to screw up the... Um... I see this says heat and cold. Yeah. Do right. you have AC? Yes. In Norway, you have AC? Yes. All right, I guess in this uh, fighter pilot cabin cocoon, there is a big greenhouse of glass. I could imagine when the sun comes out, it, it does get It, it is going to be hot. So I got to try one more thing before you let me drive the car. I got to see if I can close the lid with my hat on. So let's see how that goes. Wow, that's kind of unbelievable. I've got the hat on in the car. All righty. Earlier this year, I was invited by Porsche Norway to attend their Fjord Luft event, a small intimate gathering of like-minded Porsche enthusiasts, along with a lot of other cool P cars, including a few that I got to drive. It was there that I saw the 917 CFK for the first time.
so a little bit dusty, but... Um... So now let's frame up where you can see us. Can you... I don't care about dust, I say dirt, don't slow you down. Whilst we're back here, tell me what are we looking at? Is this fiberglass? Do we got some carbon? We got a bit of both? So, what yeah. is it? So the whole body is carbon fiber. The whole body? Yeah, the whole body is carbon fiber. It looks to me like you're hiding that six cylinder motor a little bit under yeah. there. Tell me about who built the motor. Tell me about the flat fan setup and the turbocharged twin turbo. Yeah, so uh, the engine has been designed by Nine Meister in, uh, in the UK. Nine Meister, okay. Same, uh, same guy that uh, made the two or three first engine for Singer. Okay. So again, very custom engine. Intake is a complete replica of the 91710 that came after this one. Okay. Um, fitted to two turbochargers, which okay. is going through water cooled intercoolers. All right, water cooled intercoolers. So it's yeah. air and water cooled. Yeah. Luft und Wasser cooled. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. The are now. But water is only uh, done to cool the air going in. Okay. All right, air cooled in. What's underneath this? So. The intake is a flat 12 intake. The, what is different, and for people that knows the car, will see that the fan is in the wrong place and that yeah. has to do with the flat six underneath. Uh, so e even if we have 12 trumpets, yeah. you see that they're all fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So underneath, we have a flat fan. Uh, we have some custom intake that they, they're one off. Um, and they're just a copy or a replica of what is in the 91710 that came after, which was turbo charged. So this, this one on the top has no, no purpose whatsoever. How many gallons of fuel does it hold or liters? As you... Liters is about 55. Okay. Tell me about the shifting. It's five speed, obviously. Yeah. So this is. Talk me through that a yeah. little bit. So this is a G50 coming from the 964. Got it. Uh, which would normally be in front of the engine. Yeah. Now we got on the back end, which means we've added about three feet of shift rod linkage that we need. That is absolutely correct. And then we flipped it upside down. Got it. To make sure that the car is going in the got direction. It. Uh, How much work was it not flipping it upside down and putting it on the other side of the engine, but more importantly, having it an additional, let's call it two and a half feet at least of linkage rod coming into the tail end of the transmission so we don't have play. So the, the linkage and the play is actually not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is uh, the force to get the G50 into reverse. Okay. So we actually had to take off the internal and machine it down and, and make it easier to get into the reverse to even, otherwise we lose all the torque through the tubing. Got it, got it. Good, good job, we don't need to go into reverse too often. Are we running yeah. a limited slip? Are we running special gears? What are we running? Here? So it is mainly stock, except a limited slip diff. Okay. Um, but that is all the help you get. Okay, who built the tube frame? So, as I said, I started with a replica, which okay. was thrown away. Um, what do you mean you start? Describe that. What do you so, mean you started with no, a replica? So, no, so I found uh, a company that made a replica, which was fairly good. We yeah. looked at the frame and they made an exceptional good frame based on the blueprints of Forza. Okay. Uh, the only thing is that it's a little bit more rigid. That means it's it's um, uh, the sizing of the tube is a little bit higher. It's a thicker are... diameter? Yes. Is that internal or? No. So all the tubings you see from the engine going yeah. back uh, to the monocoque or what you call it into the tube frame, which is um, where you sit, uh, is a little bit stiffer. Okay. All the way around the windshield and so on. From the engine and back, uh, we have put in tubing, which is exactly in the original diameter. Uh, same in the front of the car. Okay. But the central piece is a little bit more stiff than the original one. So Was the frame built on a jig? Yeah. Okay. Of course. So um, we're talking about millimeters. Got it. Yeah. And what is the wheel, what's the wheelbase length of this car? 2,300 millimeters. Precise? Precise. Wow. I see you got some zip types here. What's yes. going on with that? Ah, that is the way they did it originally. All right, so original duct tape and zip ties. Tell me about what you got going on here. I see the facet fuel pump. Tell me what's going on here. Some sort of... So there is one fuel tank in the front and then you have a facet fuel pump, which is pumping that to a small catch tank, which is a little bit more resistant to gravity. Okay. 
uh, so we never go uh, empty of fuel in the corners. Got it. Fun fact, if you look at the 917 in the front, we can go to the front and we'll show you. Let's, let's go check it out. So where is that oil line running? So the oil li line, originally it was running inside the tube. Okay. And then it could become quite hot. Yeah. Then I left it outside, but okay. then they put some isolation. I have it all the way outside. Okay. So if you see something, this one is offset. Yeah. The reason why it's off offset I see that. is Distance the connections okay. is on the right. Okay. Okay. So if you look at what do you call it? A, a replica or a copy or a small, small model car. If this one is in the center, they haven't got the whole picture. So let me ask you this. You built it. Is there anything? Would you do it again? And would you do anything differently? I could do it again. Now, the number of hours, as I said, 10,000 hours is fabrication. Okay. Because you want everything. If you look at the wind, uh, windshield wiper, it looks like standard. Where's the windshield wiper from? 356. Okay. So uh, exactly as the original one, you take two 356 windshield wipers and you cut them to pieces and you weld them back together. And voila, that this is the 917 wiper. That's the, the might of Porsche engineering. Reusing and reusing. Is there anything you do differently second time around? Well, we started off with a frame which is correct dimension, yeah. uh, but we're in normal carbon steel. We would do it in carbon moly. Okay. Everyone is coming in, especially if you talk to enthusiasts, they're saying, oh, you need to do it in aluminium. But the reason why you don't do it in aluminium is because that they will break. And if you look at the original car, they were really, really soft in the suspension. And the reason why they were really soft they in the suspension, yeah, otherwise they break the frame. So if you did a second one, would you put a 12 cylinder in it? Yes. Okay. So for such a law abiding Norwegian citizen, you really are a true outlaw. Thank you. So for a road legal car, you do kind of have to go through quite a lot of steps to get in. It does help to have a quick release hub on the old Momo Pro Tipo. So talk me through the start procedure. Neutral G50. Yeah. What am I doing? Turning so, the key? Um, if you see all the all the buttons, yeah, um, they are all the way in. Okay. And uh, that is exactly what this was originally. Okay. So in is on. Yeah. If you pull them, they're off. Except okay. that one, which, which is, is the light switch. Light switch, okay. So you turn off the uh, turn on the ignition. Yeah. And then you push the button. So this is the key to happiness, but really you gotta push the start yeah. button. What do you mean you weren't allowed to put the tack in the center? They wanted me to see the whole speedometer. Oh, and if you put it on the side, you don't only see the boom. You don't only see the top. This speedo goes to 400 kilometers. Yep. What's, what's the fastest you've gone in it? About 240. That's pretty fast. On the track, of course. I have mad respect for Canoe, who made his dream a reality by building his version of a 917 road car at home over 10 years and 10,000 hours. He never gave up, no matter how difficult the build became. Now I know this car is not an actual 917 built by Porsche in Stuttgart or Zuffenhausen or Works 1, but it's the next best thing I've got to driving a real one. So the pressure is just a little bit less, and I tell myself it's just like a 914.6 on steroids with a body kit. Naturally though I do realize that Knut has built himself a faithful recreation down to the very last millimeter. Now getting inside takes a little practice and a few stretches before would have been helpful. But once inside, it's tight and the laid back seat in position with my arms and legs fully stretched out is strange to say the least, especially as nothing is adjustable. Yet somehow, it's not so uncomfortable Although the pedal box is a tight fit for my size 11 and a half Nikes, I somehow managed to make it work. But heel and toe and left foot braking is certainly a bit tricky, and shifting gears through the G50 box is really delicate, no doubt due to the fact we've got an extra two feet of shift rod linkage going all the way to the back. The biggest difference though is the lack of 12 cylinders. To be road legal in the land of Vikings, Knut had to go with the custom flat 6 twin turbo, which obviously doesn't sound like a flat 12, but does get the job done.
I haven't asked you this. When did you start the build and when did you finish the build? So the build started back in 2013, 14. Okay. Uh, but again, we started with something else we have thrown away. So uh, in terms of what is left, uh, the build started in 15, 16. And when did you finish it? Last year, one wow. year ago. Okay. And how many miles have you put on it since? Uh, you will see when you see the rev control. I don't okay. Know. And have you tracked it? Yes. Okay. Talk to me about the wheel and tire setup, what size the rims are, what size the tires are, what the brakes are, and what the suspension is. So for this car, we have a little bit different rims and tires and so on, because also it has to be do with the road approvals. Uh, but in the front, uh, the original one was 15 inch diameter wheel, 11 inch wide, okay. 23 and a half inch tire in, yeah. radius. In the back, it was 16.2, but 16.2 is more like 440 millimeters yep. or 16.2 inches. Uh, it is 60, 26 and a half okay. in height. So it's On the tire, bigger, 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 radius. bigger in the back, yeah. uh, but the same 15 inch width. Okay, so it's all right, got it. So it's 15s all around. Yeah. You're running center locks. Talk to me about what is stopping this car. What are the brakes? What is the suspension? So. Uh, there is still available brakes, which is the same Gurling brakes that they used back in the days. Uh, we have a little bit of space problems with, uh, or what do you call it, the road legal tires. Okay. So we are using brakes from AP Racing because they, they're the only one that fits. Was that a custom brake caliper or off the shelf? No, it's an off the shelf caliper, but if you take what do you call two pieces of paper, that is exactly what is going between the, the brake caliper. Yeah, so okay. the clearance is zero. So how do you balance the wheel if you have zero clearance? So it, the weight needs to go on the back side of the caliper, yeah. and when you set the, the wheel onto the car, you need to have the you, you need to have the weights on the other side of the caliper to fit it, and then you can turn it afterwards. Okay, okay, okay. All right, and the suspension? Suspension is the same as Porsche did. We have changed the pickup point in terms of what Gulf changed it to. Okay. So Porsche did one setup, which is in the blueprints. Okay. But all the Gulf cars has made some changes. Forward visibility is fine through the curved windshield. It just takes some time getting used to where the front nose ends. Just ahead of my feet, something that drivers back in the day were always worried about in case of an accident. Rear visibility on the other hand though is non-existent and it's hard to gauge just how wide the 917 is on these narrow Norwegian roads. Within a few miles and a few tunnels, though, I started to get used to driving this strange sensation and rhythm of driving a 917 on the road. And I imagine what it would be like driving one of these at speed in anger for 24 hours. I had often heard Derek Bell and Vic Elford talk about going 240 miles an hour down the Molson Strait in the dark at night at Le Mans. I never saw such speeds in my seat time, though. Times were different 50 years ago. I got somewhat comfortable inside this very noisy and hot cocoon of a cabin and managed to cover over 300 kilometers on some awesome and unforgettable mountain roads through some epic tunnels along some stunning fjords and over some snow-capped mountains, savoring every emotion and shift, every engine note and turbo hiss on my way to something I'd look forward to all day. A Norwegian sauna and cold dip in the fjord to cool and soothe my aching body. Whilst my ears rang and the experience swirled inside my head, my body buzzed as if I was still in the car, and the sunlight turned into a midnight dusk. 